morning. Welcome to St. Anne's. Welcome to those who are joining us uh, online. Um, for a long time, uh, in fact, people always tell me this. They always like when I say Christ is risen, and then people echo it back. But actually, there's an appropriate there's actually a, a, an appropriate response for it. My mom used to do it in Polish. Um, the Spanish mass do, does it in Spanish. So I say Christ is risen, and you say He is risen indeed. So Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah, yeah. It's happy. Um, we have a lot of people this morning. We want to welcome all our visitors and guests and families and friends. Um, so because of the, the numbers, there's new directions. Uh, so um, since COVID, it's become the custom here at St. Anne that we don't pass baskets around for the collection but that we invite you to come to the altar and place uh, your uh, offering in the baskets by the altar. It's kind of like the seven inning stretch uh, at a baseball game. So um, because of the numbers, uh, there's uh, two baskets up on either side of the altar here. This, the little black square uh, basket is for, uh, this is the fifth Sunday of the month, which happens four times a year. Whenever there's a fifth Sunday, the second collection is for the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. They are the people here at St. Anne that help uh, those who come to our doors in need, whether it's rent or PG&E or food or whatever. So um, your generosity towards that helps us help the people in need in our community. Um, because of the crowds, I have also placed uh, four baskets, uh, one for St. Vincent de Paul, one for the parish, uh, by the baptismal font. So those of you who are in the foyer or against the walls, you can kind of file there. The people that are in the chairs can file in towards the altar. For communion, uh, we have reintroduced, as of last week, uh, communion from the cup. Uh, so uh, we receive the blood of Christ. There'll be two ministers in front of the altar. There will be two ministers on both sides of the altar. Now for the communion procession, for those of you who are regulars, we're not following our normal procedure. So there'll be a Eucharistic bread minister on either side of the baptismal font. People along the walls and in the foyer can file towards those two Eucharistic ministers and can receive from the cups in front of the altar. The people in the chairs, there will be two ministers of the Eucharistic bread on either side, and then you can receive from the Eucharistic bread and then, uh, re and then receive from the cup on either side. You don't have to receive from the cup. I understand if people are reticent, However, don't ignore it. Like, you know, sometimes people walk by like I'm not going there, you know. Uh, we reverence the cup as, as the presence of, you know, of Christ as well as the Eucharistic bread. So you can make a bow towards it or take it in your hands, hold it up, and then hand it back to the Eucharistic minister. Either way, but um, we want to show reverence to the presence of the risen Christ in the Eucharist. Um, this morning, after the liturgy, we will have, they will give me, there'll be directions for outside for the Easter egg hunt. And um, <clears throat> I think that's about it. Um, I'll review the communion procession uh, right before communion. So um, before we begin, I invite you to greet your fellow members who are members of the body of the risen, the risen body of Christ. The only body that Christ has in the world today is you and I. So greet each other and then we will get started. Thank you.
Sunday, please stand and join in joyfully with our Easter hymn, Alleluia, Love is Alive. Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the God of life who broke the bonds of death and raised Jesus from the tomb be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, uh, last evening we celebrated the Easter Vigil. Uh, the new fire was kindled and blessed and our Paschal candle was prepared and lit. The waters of our baptismal font were, were blessed and our promises were renewed. And four adults were initiated into the church through baptism and one entered the full communion of the Catholic Church. The holy oils were received at the Holy Thursday liturgy. These were blessed by our bishop and sent to us for use in the sacraments throughout the coming year. This, these sacred symbols remind us that we are a chosen people, cleansed in the waters of baptism, anointed for service in God's kingdom, and called to walk in the light. Let us ask God that after our 40 days of Lenten preparation, this Easter may awaken within us the new life that God offers to all of creation. And now let us join in singing the song of the angels.
us pray. God of undying life, by your mighty hand you raised up Jesus from the grave and appointed him judge of living and the dead. Bestow upon those baptized into his death the power flowing from his resurrection so that we may proclaim near and far the pardon and peace you give us. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, firstborn from the dead, who lives and reigns with you now and always in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is of earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On that first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark, and she saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there but he did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they yet did not understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I have an Irish story to share with you. Uh, they always have the best stories, you know. It's called The Blackbird's Nest, and it's about St. Kevin of Ireland. 
Early one morning, when all of Ireland slept beneath a quilt of wintry white, a baby boy was born. His mother traced his wrinkle, the wrinkle of his mouth, his perfect eyelashes, and half-moon fingernails. She kissed his forehead as warm and soft as bread dough. As she cradled her babe at the open door, her eyes widened with wonder. In the forest beyond, snowflakes coated the tree branches, but melted the moment they touched the earth encircling her home. She had never seen such a thing before. When the baby was 40 days old, he was baptized. As the priest lifted the infant from the water, he blessed him and said, beautiful child of God, you shall be called Kevin, a name which means gentle one. But the gentle baby Kevin grew into a mischievous boy. He chased girls with stinging nettles, and he shoved the smaller boys out of the way. When the village children saw him coming, they ducked into their homes. He pushed, he shoved, he bullied. He was anything but gentle. But with the animals, Kevin was a different person. When they heard his footsteps in the woods, they waited. Deer stood still so he could pet them. Butterflies lit on his shoulders, and geese followed him home. Kevin befriended every animal he met. This puzzled his parents. Their son was so awkward with people, yet completely at home with animals. When the front door creaked open, they cringed. What creature has Kevin clutching this time? Was it an injured goose, a snapping turtle, or a scrawny puppy? At, na at night, Kevin shared his, shared his bed with his animal friends whose soft breathing lulled him to sleep. When Kevin was seven, his parents sent him to live at a monastery so that he could learn how to read, to write, and to pray. As he knelt beside the monks in chapel, he felt he almost belonged there. But the monks struggled with unruly Kevin. He tripped over their feet when he rushed in late into chapel. He pretended not to hear when reminded, they reminded him to scrub the hallway floors. And sometimes he would sneak into the kitchen and would steal bread to feed the ducks. As Kevin grew older, the monks only grew tired of his antics. One year, when he was a teenager, they asked him to spend 40, the 40 days of Lent praying alone in a desolate valley. As he trudged to his solitary hut, he wondered why no one wanted him around. He felt very alone. The next morning, while Kevin prayed with his arms extended through the window of his hut, he felt something drop into his hand. He opened his eyes. A blackbird perched on his open palm with a twig in her beak. She looked directly at Kevin as if to ask a question. Over the next few days, Kevin held out his arm as the blackbird wove a nest of stalks, moss, and twigs in his hand. Kevin cradled the nest even as the blackbird laid her eggs. Lord, have mercy, he whispered. Day followed day, and Kevin stood as still as a tree. He ate the berries that the blackbird fed him and drank the dew on his lips. He did not even scratch his nose, although he desperately wanted to. His knees were stiff, his outstretched arm was growing weak, and his fingers were turning blue. Lord, have mercy, he whispered. One morning, Kevin awoke to a wiggling egg. Days later, the egg split open, revealing a scrawny, exhausted chick. 
A second egg wiggled. Within a few days, the nest was full of newly hatched chicks. Lord, have mercy, Kevin whispered. Soon, the fast-growing chicks peered over the, the nest's rim. Kevin watched as the baby birds learned to fly. They flexed their oversized wings, flopped from the nest, and landed in the dirt. Forty days after the mother blackbird first lit on Kevin's hand, the last bird left the nest. Kevin collapsed on the flagstone floor of his hut. He closed his eyes and whispered, Amen. Kevin slept for hours, and when he awoke, his body ached. Suddenly, the words from his baptism came to him, Beautiful child of God, you shall be called Kevin, meaning gentle one. He knew that it was time to let people, not just animals, into his heart. He leapt to his feet. He must return to the monastery for the great feast of Christ's resurrection. Kevin arrived just in time during the service of candlelight, spreading from one wick to the next, and brightness surged through Kevin's soul. Holding his own flickering candle, he peered into the faces of his brother monks. It was as if he was seeing them for the first time. Kevin never forgot the spring with the blackbirds and how they hatched in his hand. One day, he returned to the valley where he spent that long ago Lent and founded a new monastery. Kevin lived to be 120 years old, and he took his last breath encircled by his beloved fellow monks. He was buried near the monastery church. For more than a thousand years, pilgrims have flocked there to pray. But years of wind and rain and snow and sunshine have worn the words off the gravestones, and nobody is quite sure where his body lies. But the blackbirds remember. While the din of the pilgrims' voices and footsteps fade away, they return. Perching on a single weathered cross, they sing gently to their friend. I love that story. Um, one of the things about Easter that we have to kind of shift our consciousness. A lot of us think that Jesus rose from the dead to prove, oh, I'm God, you know, look at me, you know? Um, or we just see it as, you know, something that Jesus did, but it doesn't really make any impact on our lives. You know, we heard the story of the empty tomb. You know, the story of the empty tomb. There's lots of stories about the empty tomb. But what the stories are trying to tell us is we do not look for Jesus in an empty tomb. We look for him in the life that is all around us. That was the lesson that Kevin learned. He, uh, he first saw it in nature around him and his love of the animals, but then he began to realize that, uh, that that love also has to extend to other people. That's where it gets to be difficult. I have a priest friend who used to say, I love humanity, it's people I can't stand, you know? <laughs> you know, that's the challenge. That's the challenge of Jesus is to recognize that the risen one is present not just in people like me, but he's present to everyone, and he's present on the margins of society, to the homeless that live out on our streets, to the refugees and the immigrants who are at our borders, uh, to uh, the people who are in prison or in mental health facilities. Jesus is present. 
And the only way that Jesus is going to be alive is if we live his life within us. Um, I said last night in my homily, there's a Spanish saying that I really like. It says that God is more of a verb than a noun. Yeah. A noun isn't very challenging. We think of God as something separate from us. God's up there, you know, playing a harp or doing whatever it is that God does. And, uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll do a few religious things just in case there is a God and just in case there is a heaven. But that's not the challenge. The challenge is to think of a God, God and Jesus as a verb. And if we think of him as a verb, he's found in the loving. He's found in the forgiving. He's found in the healing. He's found when we do things to make our world a better place. He's found when we try and restore the health of the planet so that all of God's creatures might have a place to live and that future generations uh, will have a planet that will sustain them. In all of those things, Christ is present and Christ is dwelling in us. We don't look for Jesus in an empty tomb. We look for him in us, in us personally and in us assembled together as his risen body, the only body that Jesus has in the world today. And so like Kevin, sometimes we have to take, it's a process that we have to go through. And we got to strip ourselves of everything that prevents us from seeing the risen Lord all around us. And this is why we have liturgy and every Sunday we gather together because we have to be reminded. We have to be reminded that his love gathers us together. He speaks to us in the word of scripture and he's present when we break bread and share a cup. So this Easter, my prayer for you is to have the joy of recognizing the presence of the risen one because he's here. He's here among us. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Is risen indeed. Amen. Please stand. My dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we were buried together with Christ in baptism so that we might rise with him to a new life. Now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises that we made at our baptism when we rejected Satan and his works and promised to serve God faithfully in the communion of his holy church. And so I ask each of you, if you're ready to respond, I do. Do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Then do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, was buried, and raised from the dead, and sits at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May God keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. And now I'm going to sprinkle you all with the baptismal waters and we sign ourselves with the cross. Yeah. 
Jesus is risen, as he said, Alleluia. In firm faith, we place our concerns before God, as did Jesus. That leaders of nations ensure that every person the free exercise of religion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, as he leads the church on the path to synodality, that we, the Church, learn to walk together, listen to each other, and the Holy Spirit as we continue our journey to the Kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For a renewed commitment to caring for God's creation, that the condition of the planet and that we leave for future generations may be healthier. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the newly baptized and the newly who received a con uh, that new and newly received a continuing lifetime journey to the Paschal Mystery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those crushed by addiction, depression, and grief rise to new life through the grace and the mercy of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the living body of Christ gathered here nourish the spirits of those who have received the Easter sacrament. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who are sick, those suffering from physical, emotional, and psychological illness, and for those who care for them, that they may find comfort and hope in the arms of the Lord, especially for those we call to mind or names aloud. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayers. For our loved ones who've gone before us in faith, especially for those who've died, we now call to mind or aloud.
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers in our community book of petitions, especially for the intentions of St. Vincent de Paul Society and the Society of St. Vincent de Paul in the United States, the poor they serve, for whom this liturgy is offered, and for those prayers we now call to mind or allow. For peace in uh, the Holy Land in the Ukraine. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all the intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Glorious God, you raise up your son from the dead. Raise us up and hear our prayer that we may praise your glory today and always through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we make ready our offerings and the table of the altar. We invite you to come up and place your offerings in the baskets, the black baskets are for St. Vincent de Paul Society and their work for the poor. The big baskets are to sustain the parish. There are baskets located by the baptismal font and ba baskets in front of the altar. Just come forward when you're ready. Yeah. 
Pray that the offering of our lives in union with the sacrifice of Jesus might rise like incense and be as a fragrant gift unto God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exult in with paschal joy, O Lord, we offer you the sacrifice by which your people are wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. God, our loving Father, you have gathered us for this joyful feast. We are happy to be your children with Jesus Christ, our brother, to bless and thank you and to sing your glory. You love us so much that you have made this world great and beautiful and put it into our care. You love us so much that you have sent Jesus, your son, to show us the way to you. You love us so much that you give us your spirit to make us one family in Christ. For these gifts of love, we thank you, and with all the angels and saints in heaven, we join in singing your song of praise. toward us and compassionate to all. For this we thank you. But more than anything else, we thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus brought us the good news that we can live with you forever in heaven. He showed us the way to that life, the way of love. He himself has walked that way before us. And now he brings us together at this table that we may do what he once did. Gracious Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, make holy these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he died for us, Jesus shared a last meal with his disciples. He took bread, he gave you thanks, he broke the bread and giving it to his friends said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body, which is given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, he poured a final cup of wine. Once more, he gave you thanks, and handing the cup to his disciples, said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured forth for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we Here in your presence, Father, we remember with joy all that Jesus has done to save us. In this sacrifice which he entrusted to his people, we celebrate the memory of his dying and rising. <coughs> Father in heaven, accept us together with your beloved Son. He went freely to death for us, but you raised him from death to life. Now risen, he lives with you, yet remains with us forever. He will come again in glory to heal all pain and sorrow. Gracious God, you have invited us to share 
the body and blood of Christ as we eat and drink at this table. Unite us in the joy of the Holy Spirit and strengthen us to serve you all our days. Lord God, keep in your care your servant Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Michael our Bishop, with all the bishops and all who minister to your holy people. Fill all Christians with the joy of Easter and help us bring this gladness to all who are sorrowful. Grant that all of us may one day be with Christ in heaven, together with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, St. Anne, her mother, and all the saints, and with them dwell in your presence forever. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, free us from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Uh, at the table of Jesus, we become what we eat and drink. We become his body and blood so that we can uh, make the world a better place. And uh, just a reminder for the directions for communion. If you are out in the foyer or you're against the walls, just file towards where the center doors are and the baptismal font is, and there will be uh, two Eucharistic ministers there. There will be two cup ministers in front of the altar for you. 
On the, uh, those of you who are in the chairs, there will be two bread ministers located at either end of these aisles. So um, file in towards those, uh, those aisles, but please do not try and return by that aisle. Um, please circle around so that we don't have a log jam. Behold the Lamb of God, behold our Paschal Lamb who has been slain. He is our nourishment and life. Happy are they invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Eternal God, watch over the people, your people with unfailing care, that we who have received mm -hmm. new life through the Paschal mystery of Christ may come now to the glory of his resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, just a couple quick announcements. Um, we uh, we are on. Uh, we have a live streaming every Sunday, so you can stay in touch with us that way. Also, uh, you can uh, contribute to the parish uh, through uh, Parish Soft Giving, which is found and on our website. And. Um, uh, Infant baptism classes uh, is the first Tuesday of each month for uh, the parents. Uh, you can call the office to register. This Tuesday is the first Tuesday. Adoration of the Eucharist, second Saturday of each month from 6 p.m. to midnight in the chapel. Our Women's Fellowship sells seized candies to raise money for uh, their annual scholarships, and they're pleased to announce that th this year they have four $750 scholarships to be awarded to male or female high school seniors or freshman college students. Forms can be obtained at the church office or on the website. There's more information on the bulletin. Um, also, the office will be closed tomorrow so that uh, the staff can recuperate from the festivities. And um, uh, also, uh, follow the directions of the people outside for the Easter egg hunt. Also, the diocese is a little late this year, but uh, Bishop's Annual Appeal is coming up. There are these flyers if you want more information about the appeal. Um, our goal as a parish is to raise $26,800. It's the same as last year. We went over 100%, so if you'd like to help us with that effort, uh, uh, please do. And then... Um, I always forget people, so, um, you know, no brains, no headaches. So, um, <laughs> someone gave me a cheat sheet uh, that said, you always forget some people, so she gave me a list. So, these are my thank yous. I want to thank all who prepared our elect. Those are the people who were baptized last night, their catechists, sponsors, family, and friends who accompanied them along this journey. We want to thank all who uh, prepare and care for our space, our liturgical environment, who keep it clean and who decorate it and arrange the flowers. Um, we want to thank the Knights of Columbus who help us set up, also our Women's Fellowship. We want to thank all our lectors who work hard to proclaim the Word of God each week, our Eucharistic ministers who help with the table uh, with the table hospitality, our greeters who meet you at the door when you come in and who hand out the bulletins at the end of liturgy. I want to thank our live stream team in the booth over there and also our AV team uh, uh, in, the book there, uh, in the booth over there that uh, do the sound in the slides. Um, thank you to our choir and musicians. Uh, uh, they did a great job. Thank you to our altar servers and all our sacristans who get everything ready. We're also thankful to the parish staff who work extra hard during these weeks to get ready for Easter. And thank all of you for being here with us. Let's stand together and pray for God's blessing. Oh, I forgot, birthdays. Uh, anyone celebrating a birthday this week? I'm there. I can't see you, but we'll know you're there. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Anybody else? Happy birthday. Anybody else? Any wedding anniversaries? How many years? 20? Congratulations. Anybody else? Okay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God with your lives. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. On your mark, get set, go. Okay, <laughs> hit it. Thank you. 